um, thanks guys for joining us for another episode of the Sound of a Crowd podcast. We have a debate for you today. In my left corner, we have Isaac. <laughs> what up? Hi everybody, how's it going? Kwame. What's going on, boys? What's going on? Yeah, on the right corner we have... Mm. Yeah, aka Empress Yeah, baby. Yes! <laughs> and then on the right we have we have Jess, aka Jar the Creator. Hey, Come on. Yo, Jess, as, as always, a pleasure to have. It. I think you've been on every season so far. I think you have. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. you have. So congratulations, <laughs> man. I always have. Always, it's always a pleasure having Jess on the show. Exclusivity. You know, I think he's a faithful servant, and yeah, really pleased to have him on the show. So guys, you already know the drill. Um, this is a show where we chat with colorful entrepreneurs and creators from a Ghanaian heritage or backgrounds, bringing you closer, one step closer to Ghana. We're going to go straight into it, guys. So we want to talk about, what do we want to talk about? The great diaspora migration. Why is everyone from celebrities to the diaspora, to Nigerians, to random people just moving, not just to Ghana, but to Africa as a whole? We're going to break this down right now on the table. Oops, I've just, <laughs> I've just, Don't break <laughs> I've just the banged the tape. <laughs> no, like my my, my, my sound's gone, but I know it's it. still recording, so mm. it's fine. Uh, so let's go straight into it. So let, let's go around. So Je- Jesse, like, let's just let's just have a conversation. Really, it doesn't have to be any particular order. Mm. So what's happening, guys? You know, so um, I read obviously not too long ago. Obviously, we're talking about Nas, Nas on his album, talking about wanting to move to to, to, to Ghana. Dave Chappelle kind of hinted at it. We have Stevie Wonder who's probably already made a move by now. I have no idea. Mm. But what is going on from celebrities to Nigerians? I was with a Nigerian friend who said, look, he's getting ready to... Um, he does property in the UK. He's a property investor, but he's actually getting ready to actually make plans to actually buy land and construct in Ghana wow. and move over there. And okay. I was like, whoa, that, I did not see that coming. I did not see that coming because he looks he looks very, very comfortable in the UK. Yeah. I must I must admit, I've seen mm. his car, I've seen where he lives. It's very, very comfortable, but he actually wants to really look at it. Okay, great, cool. Um, what's going on, guys? Who wants to take this first? Anyone? What, what is happening? What's happening to me? <laughs> what's happening to I mean, us? I mean, for me, why? Why are they moving to Ghana? Because I don't think everybody has the same interests mm. as we all think they do. I mean, obviously, yeah, Ghana's nice. It's lovely. Yeah. And a lot of the American rappers, I feel that for them, it's an identity identity thing as well. Because mm. obviously, like being in America, they haven't really been able to connect with that country. Although they've done, built this and built that and mm. built that. So I think with Ghana and Ghanaians just being so welcoming, it just seems inviting. But I feel like again like what for so are they going to help improve the country mm, that's a good point actually are they going for themselves if they're going for themselves that's cool but yeah. then you also got to look at the aspect of why you're going if you're going because you was led here based upon the fact that it was like a pan-african thing sort of thing yeah then yeah that if you're just going there just for retirement or peace of mind then cool but what i i think for me personally with celebrities i'm a bit like i don't, I don't really know you see where I'm coming from because I feel there's certain practices that they may bring over to Ghana that might spoil the country. Like, um, what's that guy's name again? Um, model, uh, Jesse Israel, or what his name is. Okay. And he was talking about the same thing. He was saying, raw, like, we've got to kind of look at Ghana and keep certain things in Ghana that are naturally there before we even had, like, for example, we said, obviously, everyone's using Uber now. But the whole aspect of walking somewhere in Ghana to like a long distance is, is much more of a, a better feel. If we automate it like the UK or USA, then it's going to kind of spoil the country. That's what he was saying. True. And I, and I, I kind of got what he was... Because at first I was thinking, nah, man, we've got to look at development. We've got yeah. to look at improving, which we I do. agree with. We do. But I do feel where he's coming from in a sense of, yeah. you know, what's going to happen in the next 20 years if it's all of us coming with our ways. Some people like to drink and party. Is there going to be like... A drink and party and culture in Ghana like that, but to a next level. Yeah. Like an iron apple or yeah. <laughs> everyone's just flying to Ghana just to <laughs> yeah. it's a fact. You know, yeah. I don't want to say on camera. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just true. You do get those candidates, but um mm. I think is uh I think the kind of people that we have um seen moving to Ghana, I think we have a wide variety of people, you know, who wanna do different things. You know, I've seen a lot of um, people. Of, I mean, let's take even Izzy. Izzy, um, who just moved over to Ghana. Actually, moved, she moved over to Ghana quite some time ago. Izzy? Um, Izzy. Izzy, Izzy, you're being found the vine. Oh, okay. Well, she's tech, been, like been back and forth. She's been back and forth, yeah, yeah mm. for some time now. But um, she's obviously just only just set up found the vine in Ghana. Obviously, that's one person that's not just trying to benefit 
from the best of both worlds, you know, living in Ghana, having one foot in Ghana, having one foot in the UK. Um, but also she's actually trying to actually do something with the tech talent that we have in Ghana, which is fantastic. So, uh, and, and then you may have, I don't know, like one of these celebrities want to move over there because they want to retire, fair enough. Mm. But also, but what could that do? Could that potentially bring more attention to Ghana? Who knows? So I think there's a wide range of benefits, but I don't think it's just going to be people that just want to party and do stuff. Hey guys, this is Agent with a quick message from our brand new sponsors, Ice Cream and Tea. So, are you a foodie in the UK that finds dessert options on food delivery apps a little bit basic and uninspiring? Well, you need to get yourself some ice cream and ting ice cream and indulge yourself today. They make small batch ice cream tubs with flavours that are rich and inspired by the African continent and the Caribbean. So, what are you waiting for? Get some luxury ice cream ordered straight to your door by heading over to icecreamandting.com and enjoy this experience like I am today. Thank you very much. Now back to the episode. But Adrian, I have a question. Go on. When we say move, what do we mean? Because like relocate completely, take everything. Every, okay, everything. Okay. Shipping. Uh, uh, oh, look. Out. Okay, yeah. so this is a good point. Okay, go and on. the reason why I think it's a good point is because um, I'm sure you guys would have seen on YouTube, there's a, a lot of videos now focused on Ghana. Uh -huh. And a lot of people saying they've moved to Ghana. Um, and that's what it looks like on the surface. But yeah. actually, I think there's a lot of activity taking place under, under the umbrella of moving to Ghana. So you have, I'm going between, so maybe like six months here, six months there, as you mentioned, or maybe yeah. I'm going to go see what it's like and come back. You have the people who are like, I've sold my house, I'm shipping everything, <laughs> I'm not coming yeah. back. Why do I need to come back? And I think you also have the people like who were investing. Mm. Um, so mm. what what do you think about those three? And, and if you were to move, what, what kind of bucket would you be in? Because I think, I don't think, um, a lot of the videos in social media tell the full picture when yeah, they're yeah, moving. Yeah. yeah, they just show the highlights, the Instagram, right? They just show the mm. best parts, not necessarily the worst parts. That's a very, very good um, analysis right there. Um, I never thought about that way. There's, there's a, there's a, you know, wide. That's, that's even the whole conversation itself. There's a wide variety of people that move to Ghana, like you just mentioned. Um, I like to say I'm all of the above actually, but um, I'm probably more or less the person that actually wants to relocate for good. Um, and you know, not just have one foot in and in the UK and one foot in Ghana, but more or less move there. But then obviously not every now and then I'm gonna be out of the country because you need what I've learned from not just family, but friends that have lived there for years, you need to keep Ghana fresh by leaving the country. <laughs> yeah? Go, go <laughs> into Abu Chair <laughs> and coming back. You need to keep Ghana fresh by doing that. I've got yeah. a cousin that lives in Ghana very popular he lives he travels every six weeks i mean he even just got back from every six weeks every, if if that every six weeks i mean he he just got back from um doing a, a, a like a like a whirlwind trip in europe got back to ghana within a week he messaged me hey adrian um i'm flying to texas um, um me i'll message you later because we're working on a project together i'm like this guy just does not sell but anyway there's different types of people depending on what you you want to get from it but i think the concern for us is are you just coming to come and just party and just take 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 and not give 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 to our country you understand so i think that's probably one of the concerns um kwami what's your what's your view on all of this like people i think move? in in on the balance of things it's a good thing yeah because at the end of the day more people that go over there and bring exposure to the country it helps increase the prospects of things like tourism yeah. and then helps feed the actual gives employment to the, the youth that's there it's true. Because it's true. currently we have a we have a very young population. It's true, yeah. And mm. they're gonna need jobs. It's and currently true. the jobs are not there. So if there's more yeah. people coming in, it gives more opportunity for people to actually get engaged in, in some sort of employment. Fantastic. Yeah, actually good great you mentioned actually because I'm um I've been speaking to Enoch, who's obviously she he's part of um YGP now. Um and he is basically he's got this thing called hundred K for Ghana. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. And essentially what you're trying to do is raise like i think maybe over 100k or whatever to be able to invest into crane like in it's establishing industries and creating jobs for um you know people in ghana you know? mm. and i think in december he's like um put this whole street team together to go out there and actually do things so he's, he's building up onto that and he's someone i think i've had we've had conversations to come on the podcast but it hasn't happened yet um, but hopefully that will happen sometime maybe even in ghana because i'm going to continue sh filming some episodes there when i when i go next month so yeah, let's just uh, keep the ball rolling. It's quite interesting. Um, Isaac, what's, what's, what's your views on everyone just moving to Ghana all of a sudden, or just Africa as a whole now is starting to kind of trend and people want to move, they're tired of the UK lockdowns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think that does play, play um, a factor in it because 
Well, you think about how things are when um, when you're here. Yeah. Um, now things are regimented. You got routine. Mm-hmm. Um, work life balance is more skewed towards work more than life. Mm. Um, a lot of people, because of the pandemic, have felt like I think it gave, it gave people a chance to reevaluate what was important to them. Yeah. Mm. Um, am I here to be working, or am, am I living to work, or am I working to live? Type thing. Yeah. So mm. I think a lot of a, a lot a lot of time to reflect has maybe given people the idea, and also like things like um, working from home has mm-hmm. meant that. The opportunity to work it's, it's, and not necessarily have to live it's a fact yeah in so a, close in to your a particular place, place. Yeah. Mm. It's, it's just like, like things are more opportunity has been open so it's very true. you can have a more nomadic yeah. lifestyle as it were yeah. so very you don't true. have to be situated in a particular place very true so i think it's been a combination of you know there's been this kind of hype and ghana's been buzzing we've had the pandemic mm. people have had a chance to reflect reevaluate what's important to them and then you know that opportunity to to be able to still earn a decent wage yeah. and then live in a place that you would prefer yeah. has come into play. So I think, yeah, that's that's all what I believe has contributed to this increase or in popularity of, of moving to Ghana. Absolutely. And I think that's that's a very interesting point that you made that people this whole kind of work from home culture, remote working culture has now create opened the door for people to just work wherever they want. Why not work in Ghana from a beach? Why you why why mm. be in the you know, in a two bedroom narrow house when you can just be in the beach somewhere working from your laptop, why? Understand? So I think obviously even with that, some people still have, you know, a lot of factors in play that's stopping them from doing that, whether it's family or kids, or whatever. But I think if you're maybe like a, a young single man like me, why not get your ass down there? <laughs> why not get your ass down there? Um, but it's actually, I, and I like the point you mentioned also because one of my good friends, um, she based, she's also a podcaster, shout out to Shadia. Um, but yeah, um, she was working remotely um, from, um, um, actually she was working in America and then obviously she you know, took the job remotely and moved back to Ghana, you know what I mean? And now she's working remotely from Ghana. So I think um, it definitely has created a door for so many opportunities, you know, just to work from home anywhere. Um, yeah, I think it's a very interesting season that we're in, now just seeing everyone's wanting to kind of- I don't think we know. Do. We have to recall yeah. that it's only a certain class of people that can afford to do this. It's true. Mm, like, yeah, it's, yeah, no, yeah. it's not, yeah, it's I true. think like sometimes yeah. we, we get the idea that it's like everybody's able to do it. It's only- It's not easy. You have to be, yeah. oh, and also when you go there, you, yeah. you also know you're going there to live a certain class as well. Yeah. It's true. You're not going there to be working as a hawker. You're going it's there. True. <laughs> 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 it's also a stumbling block for that's, a lot of people because- That's a good point, yeah. They, um, they want to maintain that European mm-hmm. style of lifestyle. Yeah, but then like mm-hmm. when you go there, you're broke, and then you have to come back. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you see, like, within six months, back. 12 months, 18 months, uh, at the most for most people, they're having to return back mm. because they can't sustain it because it's yeah. expensive. Like, Yeah, yeah. It's, ex- it's true. Yeah. It's true. It's true. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's like, no, go on, go on, go on. Yeah. We need to normalise people being able to come back and figuring it out again and going back because I feel like people if it hasn't worked out for them how they thought it would, yeah. um, you don't hear that story. And, and sometimes you can learn more from what- That's actually a good point. Mm. Why don't we hear that I mean, story? People th- are hiding. There's a few people, like there's a there's a family a ch- on- That Champong family. Yeah, they on, just on, on back. YouTube, yeah, yeah. Were you, were you just thinking of them, yeah? I can <laughs> no, tell you thinking it, about them. What, the, what, the, guy, what, the guy with the dreads and the, the wife, the American- Have you got dreads oh, though? No, 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 no that's, a, that's, yeah. that's it, native born, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that's another one. I watched them and you know what? Cause they went in 2016. Yeah, they were early. Early, yeah. He's got, like, he's got like five, what, five kids, yeah. five or six kids. And obviously him and his wife have been married and he's broken down everything. Like to a point where I remember when they were telling them one story about how they moved to one spot. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, basically, you know, they said, they, we said like, we, you know, America's like, we probably got bought in. You know, we was like, yeah, man, Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> they said they went up north to a trip. Wow. They came back. Yeah. They said everything was gone Cleaned. in their yard. Wow. Cleaned. Oh, wow. Laptops. Cleaned. Wow. They even wow. took the fridge. What? He was like, he was like, eh? hey man, they, they spare nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so he was like, raw, like, that was a big experience. And obviously in America or here, you're like, oh, call the police. Yeah. Yeah. Or call the police. Yeah. 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 That was like, it was yeah. void. Yeah. So obviously some of the local people in the town would help them out the and then obviously involved. <laughs> like, it was like raw like but then then he realised later on that it was one of the neighbours. <gasps> no. So they obviously tried to approach that neighbour but you know uh-huh. in Ghana sometimes people are like the phantoms you don't ever see yeah. them. They come and disappear. <laughs> yeah. wow. So wow. the community were kind of like 
I mean, although he was upset, he was like, "Raw, you know what? I'm going to learn from this." Mm -hmm. So he even with the cars, like buying a car, he was like, "I, I bought a car, but then I'm not accustomed to driving in Ghana, so I had to <laughs> sit back." But then I had to think, "Hold on, why not? I just learn." And it's actually driving schools in Ghana. You can actually go to a driving school in Ghana and learn how to drive. But that, that driving school, that, that Ghana driving yeah. experience is a different level. It's a driving. different level. It's a different it's level. A different different level. level. Like, it, but I know for me, it's important because when you're on the way uh -huh. from, let's say you're traveling to Kaswa and you're coming back to Accra yeah. and it's middle of the night, there's no night bus. There's no bus. Yeah. There's, no there's no other transportation. There's no other transportation. So you're going to yeah. make sure you're going to have your car. To get a taxi to, get, to yeah. do that journey. He's going to be like, yo. Mm. Yeah, he's going to look at you like, okay, I'm going to drink. I'm not working for a month. <laughs> you know what's there? Like, I'm going to, because again, I, I, and I, and you know what's there? Like, I understand it. Like, I understand it. So I'm like, raw, like, I feel with, with, people's expectations like what you were saying yeah um this is why because even like one of my friends um long time ago her, her, her stepdad was talking to talk about oh, yeah man man just go go and get a land and live off it <laughs> i'm like bro nah <laughs> it's not straightforward. get in the land process for you already that will be mad because you don't even understand how that works true mm. true, true and true. on top of that as well ghana's not like a a, a a utopia of like just like a Narnia, like you go into a closet, and it's all, it has its own problems. It, does it has its, its own. Problems. So I always, always encourage people, even myself, I've looked at it yeah. and said, you know what? I want to move back there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm being realistic about it. And I said, I want to start earning money from there first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I know enough people that, like you said, have gone there. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they're like, yeah, we're good. Da, 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 da. And then bro, six months later, they're like, raw, like, why is, why is price like this? Da, da, da. Why is tomatoes priced like that? Da, da, da. And it's like, like, yeah, but bro, like, <laughs> honeyman period's over you know what I'm saying yeah it's really insane yeah and we're, we're, we're spoiled <laughs> over here we're very very much spoiled convenience is at like right now the three of us could order transportation food mm -hmm. and help just which, at our which has all been done today right? yeah, yeah, yeah literally, literally. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, <laughs> I'm going to show you the camera of the food that you got just <laughs> in Ghana <laughs> in Ghana you might be at a spot on the beach you might not have no service Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's true. Internet is a situation. Like because trust me, constant yeah. st stable internet. Constant. Itself. Right. Yeah. That's why I would have to go Ghana and treat Ghana like how you may look at university. If you're not living over there, you might commute over there, oh. go there, stay there, and then come back. Come back. Just to see like raw. Okay, you yeah. know what? Test the waters first. I went there with two grand. It lasted me a month month and a half yeah. cool what does it mean for me to do that does that do i have to then cut down on because even these big like houses that. that people want to build i like that, I like that. maintenance, I like that maintenance. Yeah. maintenance. Yeah. houses <laughs> this is the thing <laughs> when people build their mansions yeah <laughs> and then you go and you see the mansion in 10 years time and it's like oh it hasn't yeah. there's not i don't mean any up upkeep uh, yeah uh, yeah uh, like, because, because I, almost I, like Lego. I learned that from 50 yeah 50 year the interview on breakfast no on um hot 97 i think okay. or angela Lee, not angela Lee, um Andrew Martini oh, Andrew Martini okay. and he was talking about the whole you know when he bought Mike Tyson's match yeah. and that he had the whole gene mm -hmm. in there I remember that. and he was like yeah like you know it was, everyone was like yeah but why did you sell it he's like <laughs> that cost me 600,000 a year wow. on maintenance wow. I've got to pay the cleaners I've got to pay the electric bill mm -hmm. it don't make sense it don't so make sense. I'm moving to like a four bedroom thing in New York yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Less this is, is, more. Yeah. Less this, is more. this is the thing because a lot of people like to when you see people build these big houses in Ghana mm. and, they, and, they, <laughs> and also like for example people build them for the children the children don't even Go, they don't even use it yeah. Yeah. yeah the children don't even use it so the house is there and it's just rotting literally and you, therefore you got you got to get the cleaners you got to get the gardeners you got to get the electrician you got to get the plumbers yeah. all these things and everything needs maintenance constantly just, no, just do you think yeah. that comes from a time where things were more communal so you'd be having your family yeah. around you right. and maybe they've kept that but that our generation might not still be in that. I think even the generation before us have kind of really just been about themselves and their family. You see, they, they took the words right out of my mouth. I was just about to say that. <laughs> no, because I, w I was I was going back and forth with one of my aunts the other day, yeah, and I was saying to her, because she's like, oh, you know, you kids don't want to do this, you lot don't want to take... I'm like, you lot, there was never no school system or class where you lot coached us how to move to Ghana and <laughs> embrace Ghana. <laughs> there was never no, like... You know it what I'm saying? Like, like, and I rate all my aunties that have shipped my cousins to Ghana back when they were bad, and they yeah. learnt. Yeah. They stayed and went to school there and they came back because they learned the real way. Mm. You see what I'm coming from? Gang school, light off, right, cool. I'm <laughs> like, fetch water. You know what they're like, fetch water. Yeah. Like, I'm bathing with a soap and bucket outside. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they're like? like <laughs> that was different experience. <laughs> learn all the tricks in the trade. Like, you learn it on the job yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Those yeah. are real experiences. And yeah. because of that, they now understand how to maneuver. Even for me, getting in Ghana, and I realized, all right, cool. When I was staying in Ghana for like a few weeks, I realized, all right, cool, taxi driver. 
this one sending me, I will probably get three taxi drivers come at the same time yeah. mm. just to piss them off. Mm. And they're like, rah, <laughs> well, why did you call them? Why, all right, cool, how much are you charging? 100 cities. All right, cool. Well, he said 60. Uh -huh. He hasn't even said 60. <laughs> <laughs> but because I'm not going to go with him, he's quiet. You know what's there? So he's like, rah. It's like, okay, boss man, you know, Patrick. <laughs> 90 cities then. Now, it's like, right, cool. 90 cities. But I'm telling him, that's the price for my stay. Mm. So 90 cities a day, he will take me anywhere I want in Accra. Mm. Yeah. Do you see where I'm coming from? So I feel like, but I learned that from experiencing taxi drivers yeah. on a daily basis. Uh, he said 20 cities just down the road. He said 30 cities. I'm like, cool. Halfway through the day, I'm like, right, I need to go and get more cities, bro. Right. I haven't even eaten. Right. <laughs> running yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. Running out. And, then I, and I'm realizing next day, taxi drivers are outside my uncle's house, just there, like, yeah, yeah, you're you, you okay. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was crazy. Are you for real? <laughs> they grin. But, but right. Because yeah. obviously, they're like, competition. The, the word has gone round. Wow. And one, one of the guys um, bro, at that bro, event we went to, <laughs> oh, and one guy at the GH London's event I went to, uh -huh. he was basically saying, you got to be careful. Yeah, because you're gonna build a profile. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and then when you start building a profile, that's when people start. That's when you get. That's right. when you get jacked. So when you're, yeah. when you're, <laughs> you're tipping a certain oh, amount, man. twenty cities, fifty cities. Every time you're talking, just, just, you know what? That's what Uncle said. Yeah. To me. He said, "You guys, every time I see you guys from a distance, I see." Yeah. I have to run over there because I'm like, what are you not spending money on now? You know what's there? Yeah. Um, buying Red Red and I'm seeing 50 Ghana cities. What's going on? <laughs> so, the word travels fast in Ghana. Yeah. Um, so you have to learn and I feel like, like you back to what you're saying, you've yeah. got to take those steps first to encourage that. But yeah, the YouTubers are not really, there's a few, but some of them, or they go all the way negative. So it's like, I'm yeah, never going to Ghana really again. The Ghana's this, they're racist over there. So people are like, oh my God, Ghana as well. <laughs> Where can we go? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's Greenland. You know what's there like? To your yeah. point, actually, um, mm. there, okay. there's one video, or there's one, you, uh, some YouTubers who, um, they also do showcase maybe some of the difficulties, but um, I do think sometimes there can be an element of clickbait whereby oh, you have to right. go with the understanding that you're not, it's not going to be like the country you're coming from. And yeah, I feel like if you go with that, you're going to get frustrated, number one, but also I feel like it's um, portraying like a false... Um, it's almost like you come with false, false yeah, expectations. False, false mm. expectations, because then, um, so it's things like, oh, um, you know, I don't know, applying for something, the process took this long, this person said I must come back tomorrow. Like, it's frustrating, but like, mm -hmm. know where you are, because mm. that's just how it is. And I think it's to your point earlier about development. I think that's so key, because it's how do you develop, but without, I mean, I'm not saying this is like a cultural thing, but how do you develop without getting rid of your cultures? Because for now, everyone, the benchmark seems to be, we must build like Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. hold on a second. You don't need to. You don't need to. Yeah. You don't need to be knocking down old things and replacing yeah. them with shiny new things. That's like the it. history and the culture is yeah. what's going to draw people. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, and even just like the other day, sorry to keep adding on, but it's. Oh, keep going. Yeah. Always, it's, it's, you know, you know I, I said that, you know, I'm master of digressing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you got, I will digress. You got to hold me and just go, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And, and I think we do need to stay in this. I think I think it's clear that we need to go, go on this topic of talking about, you know, what are the pitfalls of moving to Ghana? Mm. Yeah, no. How can we kind of avoid or overcome them? Obviously, like you're talking about Aunt Champong family, all these people. Yeah, so yeah, you can yeah. continue. No, no, it's, it's again, because like my dad was talking about, um, he must have heard on the radio or whatever. Um, and even then, them sources, I don't know if it's true, but they found this owl apparently in Ghana, like this, this owl is like the size of a vulture, but they've never seen it since the 18th century. Wow. So I was like, raw, that's mad. Like, is anyone covering the Ghanaian wildlife? Uh, wow. Crickets. <laughs> So I'm thinking, hey, girls. <laughs> when we're looking at rebuilding, mm -hmm. if you guys are finding things like that, God knows what else you can find. Mm -hmm. But to preserve the country's culture, yeah. that could be an aspect of, like with Shire Hills, for example, when you go Shire Hills and you go to like the game reserve around Shire Hills, it's like, it's a tourist attraction, but it would, you would drive past it because mm -hmm. you wouldn't even know. Mm -hmm. But they've got so much, like the game reserve, I'm talking like, it's like from here to probably Hyde Park. That's the distance. Wow. Mm. And they've got like, you know when Kwame Nkrumah first built the um, the port for Tema? Mm. Yeah. Mm. I think there's like a railway he built through like the Shire Hill sort of mountains and whatnot. Yeah. Wow. That's where the old rail was still there. Do you see I'm coming from? And then when you drive through there, you've got all the green monkeys and that in the bush. And wow. it's wild, but there's some nice things there. Like, yeah. And the guy was saying to me, he said, yeah, sometimes some Australians come, they stay at the monkey mountain or monkey rock, yeah. whatever, and, that, and then they come and camp there. But... They're not really kind of moved for that. And I feel like you're saying, if we were building and progressing, yeah. a developer might come in and be like, yeah, just knock the whole thing down. Yeah. Build the states. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when I see estates in Ghana, I can't lie. No. I, I kind of cringe a bit. Mm. Yeah, I like them, but I kind of feel where it is. You know, I think yeah. there's yeah, some I think areas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably maybe that would because yeah, because I think Accra is a bit like 
it's 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 overpopulated now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, like in, in 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 the UK, they have things like the green belt or yeah. protected yeah, yeah, yeah. areas. Yeah. Oh right. Okay. And they, yeah. Yeah. In the UK, they they have places which are designated as you know you can't build certain things or yes. mm. so there's only certain big construction. Man, big man, the Ghana ones, you get the land. <laughs> you know, exactly. You can build whatever you want. <laughs> no, that's that's the problem. problematic because it's such a good point. I watched a video recently with um, it was I think it was. Of, uh, Henry Corti, the regional minister for Accra. Mm. Uh-huh. I don't know if you guys have seen videos of him on YouTube. If mm. not, I highly recommend uh, I from like City FM news channels. And he's okay. he's really, really uh, he's just come in with this agenda. I think it's called Make Accra Work. work yeah. And um, to your point about like the ecosystems, mm. like wetlands, they're there for a reason. And a lot of the time, mm. water needs them, yeah. the flooding places for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when you get the flooding. Exactly. So his true. point is, every year we know these floods are coming. They come every year. Why are you building on? On these areas there was, there's wetlands in Accra that is is has been reduced by like 70 percent or something like that because people have been building so he got them to knock people's properties on wow. wetlands down he's taking it very seriously yeah because it, you know and I, and I like stuff like that because I feel like that would like you said with the flooding that's for me <laughs> going Ghana yeah and it's going to like my uncle's house near like Malam and that and I'm just seeing mm. like the flooding I'm like bro I might as well wear my that swim is, shorts. Yeah. That is quite rough. But I've got a cousin lives. It's quite rough. <laughs> and you know what? That like, proper. Grammy's because laughing. You know it's on a hill, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like on the way to McCarthy Hills, isn't it? Malam is on the hill. On the way to McCarthy Hills, isn't it? Yeah, on the way to McCarthy Hill, and it's kind of like it's kind of surrounds like like you know like Dan Suman and uh what's the other like Nisha? Shout out Dan Suman. That's my foil. But you know like them kind of places there, yeah. I'm looking at the flood and but again with the flooding situation, enough of the Ghanaians during uh-huh. dry season, uh-huh. we're drinking their coconut, their uh-huh. pineapple skin, throwing it in the gutter uh-huh. and not realizing that this is gonna block your like there was one video I think they sent in the group where they pulled out some mad thing from the drain, um when it was flat when it was like raining season and that. And the thing was like the size of a, the sofa. I'm like, how the hell did that get inside the drain? <laughs> I mean, don't even get me started on open gutters in Ghana. Man. Oh my gosh, that's, that's the whole. I don't know. Topic. For me, it's just <laughs> the whole like, it gets it gets my goat. The whole oh, oh, like we see new roads being constructed and and, and the gutters are being constructed open. Yeah, like, but this is there's no it's not a sewage system. It's a gutter system. It's not a sewage. That's the problem. No, no, yeah, that's, that's but the like, problem. Yeah, we know you create that your own sewage if you're, system if, in Ghana. Mm, if yeah. you're if you're constructing uh, gutters open, yeah. <laughs> That's just open season for people to just use yeah. it as their dispose. Mm. The, the, yeah, I, yeah. I, I wouldn't agree because there's no bins. I feel like I feel like One not least necessarily because I think it is it Rwanda where they have open gutters mm-hmm. and, and Do they? Kigali yeah. is like the cleanest city in Africa. Mm. Yeah, the gutters are open. Yeah, I see. What am I eating some food <laughs> yeah. on gutter? But let's be well, let's keep it one hundred. Like yes, yeah. he's uh, Rwanda. Yeah, or mm. um, Kigali is is quite small compared to Accra. True. And enforcing mm-hmm. enforcing discipline that people are not going to litter. In a car is near one impossible. Yeah, but that's <laughs> why you got to come out of a car. You guys, you guys always stay in a car. Mm. You guys well, always the, the mm. move out of a car. Let's no, keep it one hundred. Let's keep it one hundred. Back to the podcast. There's, like, there's yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> podcast name. It's a podcast name, but it's true. <laughs> it's true. Anyway, it's we've true. discussed this with Ghana three six five. Yeah, there's, there's more to Ghana than a car. We discussed that. It's true, but but even still, like. Flooding doesn't just happen in Accra anyway. Mm, like, that's true. That's and open guys are all over the whole country. Yeah, yeah. Mm. We do need a, a, a better sewage system. Yeah. Mm. But I think start with the basics. If you're constructing new roads, construct Close it with the cars, the yeah. closed, yeah. with drainage properly, properly in place, and then work your way. F- you know, work your way from, from there. From there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I'm, I'm it's sure there's renewable system. energy systems in Ghana that can conduct a, a official sewer system. In way. Mm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Likely, likely. I, I mean, it, it, this is what baffles me because I will probably be in the UK looking at the green plant or green plan, and there's enough going here, man, that are specialists on there. Mm. So I don't understand if yeah. that if that is a thing where if there's infrastructure or is it just lack of because everyone was saying makes sense, but it's the government that have that mentality of. What's the point? So the gutters, for example, will be yeah. open mm-hmm. because in their head they're like, well, one side is like, well, you know what? I can give my, my cousin the contract to come and close the gutters yeah. and I can give my other cousin co- the contract to come and clear up the mess. So let me make a problem. They, it's like the, the, the politicians think quite similar to the ones over here mm. in terms of creating problems mm. or not doing nothing mm. naturally. Or you get the other side of politicians that just don't care. They're like, hold on, what? 
listen, bro, I've got 24 million mm. funding for X, Y, and Z. You think I'm going to give it to these guys for, for sewage? No, no, no. That's going to go to my, my Bentley, my child's school fees. <laughs> you know, they, there's a mentality. You know yeah, one's there? So yeah, I feel yeah. like, yeah. I like what you guys are saying. Before building, we're going to have to look at those sort of things, I guess. But yeah. hey, I'm sure <laughs> if you looked in the rules, the rules state you that certain rules have to be applied, but the application of the rules... rules. But you see, poor. I think mm. this, this feeds back to our original statement about people going back. Because if we have people who understand rules and mm -hmm. obeying rules and being disciplined with applying rules, who are going back and changing the the um, mindset of the people that they're working around yeah. and giving people a different perspective. Because more, more, more often than not, like these people are insular and a lot of people who work in government haven't really travelled or some have like the, the ministers and politicians they've, they've studied abroad but like mm -hmm. the the people you know on the servants. ground the civil servants and whatnot are usually going to be locals who haven't really had exposure to how things are done outside of Ghana so if we've got people who are coming from abroad and mingling with these people and, and showing them a different way of doing things the hope is they can bring a different perspective and bring a better way of governance and administering how how things should be done and how things should be constructed and how projects should be executed for the betterment of the country. It's true. Mm. That's the hope. So, like, we want to know, oh, yeah, people want to come back to, to, to Ghana because <coughs> they, they want to change change of scenery or whatnot. But also, do they want to contribute and, and, and make a difference? Do they want to mm. help drive and bring the country forward? Yeah, mm. that's a that's 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 something that is important as I well. I think that's but well, that's something that uh, as an individual when you're moving back, that's something you have to ask yourself. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people they're tired, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are tired living here. They're tired. They yeah. they're like I'm going there to now just <laughs> chill. I'm not going there to to to, to now take on the country's. Po they're tired. There's, but I think I think <laughs> that's why they're going. A lot of people are going because they're tired. It's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. But I think people naturally, are tired, at some tired. point they're going to end up taking it on. They have to. Because what will happen they just come back in and they chill back and then it will be, be closed as well. <laughs> <laughs> you know when they come back in it's like, rah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rent is this and that's that. And I, you know what? And yeah, I feel like, up. I hear what you're saying. Some people are actually tired and I, and I feel people are entitled to their peace. But my thing is this year, I, all right, you don't answer me if this is correct because my barber was, we had the same kind of discussion and he was like, let me tell you the reason why it can't work with enforcement and rules. Mm -hmm. Because all of the tribes mix in and they work together and they know each other. Right. So he's saying that's that good. this is the thing. I, I'm like, yeah, that's good. He's like, no, because right. what happens is that when it comes to enforcing something, the judge might be sentencing this guy and find out that this Ashanti guy is related to this Fanti guy who's his sister's cousin, so and so. So it's like there's always a <laughs> yeah, but this is why you have to have an agreement. You, you have to have you have to have separation between that. That if you're a judge, uh -huh. your job is as a judge. And like even if right. it's your brother okay. coming in okay. right. or your own son that's coming in, right. okay. if he's broke the law, he's broke the law. Mm. And he compared that same system to um, what's my man's name in Singapore? Um, oh, I don't know. Uh, president, uh, yeah, the president. Well, anyway, but he was like, he was saying, you know, how I got Singapore to where it was now. Uh, he said he had to imprison some of his family. He had to what? go hard on the country because you have to remember, yeah, your your own mum could be the destruction to the progress mm. just simply because of a certain way of doing it's things. Tough, yeah. So you got to look at it in the sense of, like you said, if you're a top judge in Ghana mm. and your mum's half-brother is causing chaos mm. to a point where it's like, bro, nah, this guy... <laughs> it's just destroying things. It's just, you know what I mean? It's destroying things. You know, like, look at the issue that I want to... We're going to get into that in a minute, but I, I heard it on Clubhouse. This guy. Let's not get too political on this, on, no, on this episode. You know the whole Shate Wale, uh, Wale uh, situation? Oh, the, yeah. um, I didn't even, I didn't even look into it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a waste my time, man. Yeah, yeah. I was on Clubhouse, it's it's I was just it. tuning in and people were talking about, you know, the same thing. Like, how can Shate Wale order police to arrest the pastor and say he's not going to do this and that until they arrest that pastor? Like you said, the levels of enforcement, you're going to have to differentiate and I think that's the issue now because everything can be sorted underneath the table in Ghana. I mean, here's the thing. Mm. Like, rich and powerful people always get away with it. Wherever you are in the world, mm. rich and powerful people get away with a lot more than the average citizen. Yeah. It's true. That happens. Like, no true. matter here, even here, mm, if true. you've got enough money, enough power, you can make things go away. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so therefore, that, we understand the systems have limitation there. Mm. But the average person should be able to expect a certain amount of decency from the government that they have around them. Mm. It's true. The okay. rule of law, like the, the, the how rule do we of law get that to be enforced? It comes from the people. Like it's as simple as that. 
Like you could, you can have the laws in place, but if mm-hmm. the people are not abiding by them, then the laws are are no, they void. Like mm-hmm. you need people to enforce the laws and people to obey the laws. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it comes down to us. Do you feel like it's a, it's the, it's a small few that's making it seem like it's the majority? So, because for, for example, even thinking about where Ghana is now, Ghana's where it is, and it's such a beacon in Africa because of so many people, because of the people yeah. who are there now. So, mm-hmm. how would you feel if you know you've done all of this work, all of this work, and then? Your cousin comes from out of town. Is like, no, that's wrong. No, that's not how we do it in my house. No, you should do it like this. Would you feel a bit disheartened? Do you feel like people maybe go with the wrong mentality? Like, oh, I'm coming to change things. I'm coming to make it better versus let's work together. And here's the thing: it. we aren't saviors. Yeah, Those that come yeah. people the West, are not complexes. Uh, you can't like. Here's the thing: it. You, where you were, there was a problem there. You didn't fix it there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so then you can't come. <laughs> and so know that yourself, innit? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> and then the, that you come with a certain amount of expertise and whatever you do. Yeah. But you're not a savior. Like this is that a lot of people exactly. come to God and think, "Oh, younger changes and do this yeah. and do that." And then you come in and you're fighting against people, literally fighting against yeah, them yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're trying to change them. Yeah. yeah. Like, you come to somewhere else, innit? You're not. Yeah. At the end of the day, yes, you can. See See how things have happened somewhere else, mm. but where you are, where you, if you're going to Ghana, you mm. want to change things. Mm. Okay. You got to understand the people you're trying to change and start mm. small, okay. start the little start things. Small. I think mm-hmm. if you come with some grand idea that we're gonna we're gonna revamp everything, like the whole system is gonna get changed from top to bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, you're coming with the wrong mindset. You get you get so tired and then you go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you won't succeed. Yeah. Yeah. But like, if you know if you know this, this the small things that you can change, the things that you can do as as as, as a citizen to contribute. Yeah, those little things can make the difference. And hopefully, it's about educating the people around you and giving people a different perspective. Like, you want to yeah. do something and show people, okay, this can be done differently. You're not saying. You're doing it wrong. Mm. I'm doing it right. You say, have you thought about doing something this way mm-hmm. as but opposed to that way? My thing is this, yeah. And I, so I know you want to go, go on. Go on. Just wanna t- touch on that. Okay. How, if that's the case, then how did the Chinese do it? But the Chinese, also, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but also, like, also, remember, China is not a dem- democracy. Yeah, they got and a also state. they have about five thousand year history. Mm. That the Ghana's what sixty something years old. Yeah. We're as babies, a country, yeah. as a nation. Mm. The, the China has a sixty, uh, fifty thousand year history, <laughs> in which <laughs> they, they under, they've gone through they peaks and, and they were an empire like yes. they, they, they were at a height. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've Ghana, come on now. We can we can always we can always look at the history and see from before even slavery how we used to live. Yeah, what I'm saying is what I'm saying is mm. with China, yeah. Mm. If you are in control, complete control, then you can do whatever you want to do. Ghana's a democracy. Mm. Yeah, you have eight years, or you have four years, and you have hopefully another four years to be able to make the change you want to make. Mm. Yeah, China had they, their leaders had thirty years, and also look, you can't do certain things you could do in China in Ghana. Mm. Yeah, they've got what the Uyghurs, they've got them, and they're not going to that too much, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you think about the some of the stuff that like China's uh-huh. done well to get to where it's got to, but yeah, I'm telling you, there's but some people who suffered along the way. That's that's true. But then, how they're able to make it work in our country? Because it's like a slap in the face. Oh, well, when they come over, that's what I'm yeah, going to say. Those... When they come over, they're able to make that system yeah, work. But, yeah, yeah, but no, but they they here's the thing in it. Yeah, Ghanaians, Africans, when you come out from outside, you come in, and you come with money. Then you do whatever you want. Whatever you mm. you want, they come with money. And no. you know that these these mm-hmm. these these Chinese can't do whatever they want to do without Ghanaians conspiring or, or, or yeah. collaborating with them. Like literally, there's Ghanaians when, on the ground helping them. Yeah, mm. yeah, by all means, like they need those Ghanaians to be with alongside them in order for them to execute whatever they're trying to do. I feel a little bad now because I just got a um, number of. Uh, Chinese person's just moved to Ghana is doing some things over there who wants to meet me when I get there. But a Chinese person yeah, being in Ghana in it yeah. isn't in itself bad. bad. It's about it's not what they're doing what they're in doing. Ghana. Okay, so let's yeah. let's actually talk mm. about as we're on this topic, let's let's close this episode out with what kind of people do we need to move to Ghana mm. to, to make things better in this whole kind of migration, this whole mass migration. What kind of people do we want or do we need in Ghana? to make things a little bit better. So we've already talked about how we can improve the government in a sense. Mm. Um, what what kind of people do we need? Is, is that a bad, is that a bad <laughs> Well, I think people who are going mm. for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, so I think people need to, I guess, figure out why, what's your why and, and mm. the reason mm. you're going. I think, um, kind of just quickly touching on the previous point, mm-hmm. I think just globally with politics, there's always that issue with continuity. Yeah. And if... 
if a part if party X did something, maybe party Y won't continue it. But mm-hmm. actually, let's look at is it benefiting the country? Mm-hmm. Should we continue it because of that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. But I think just the final thing for me is I think it's it's so nice to see that. Um, our generation being so keen to go mm. um, versus if you look at you know in the past a lot of our older generations would be going to retire yeah. mm. and the countries they came to um, they migrated to kind of got the best, all their, the best years out of them yeah. so yeah, I think most we useful. try mm. and pr- promote um, and encourage people but just kind of support each other in their endeavours and in, mm. in, in, but it should be for the right reason yeah, yeah. and also normalised coming back yeah, yeah. normalised yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. like there's a stigma or a shame <laughs> yeah there is there like is. you failed <laughs> but, I mean you <laughs> like, tried if yeah, you tried yeah, something yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, easier to, to, it's easier to sit back and judge than yeah. Yeah. and, yeah. and that's, that goes back to the point what does moving mean because from, like when I went to Ghana literally 10 years ago this year I went for five months in total. To me, I was going for five months, but mm. people say, no, you've moved to Ghana. I'm like, no, I've just gone for five months. I'm like, no, you've moved. <laughs> and then, so to me, it's just like, yeah, what, what does moving mean? And mm. normalizing coming back for sure. And, and just, yeah, normalize having time outside of the country. It's okay to have a holiday, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Extended one, for sure. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's more than a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Now, now, I feel like, I feel we need thinkers. Mm-hmm. Yes. We need a lot of young people. Yeah. yeah. I was saying the same thing to my dad the other day. He's like, because he's like, you know, again, we have these discussions all the time. Yeah, the gatekeepers are the, do you feel like the older people, like women in government or kind of generally just running things in Ghana, do you feel like they're like gatekeepers to what we Ghana could really be? Yeah, and I feel like a lot of them, there's, for me, what I've noticed, yeah, and it's not just Ghana, it's an, I think it's an African thing. Uh-huh. There's no real respect for the younger generation. Mm. There's always this mm-hmm. aspect of, you know, although you're 60, I'm your father, I'm like 90. You still have to listen to what I do. So if I'm telling you to go and shop for me or whatever, you have to go. Like, small, I feel like that kind of mentality is wrong. Yeah. And I feel like, yes, in the aspect of respecting your elders, mm-hmm. but if you was to research the term elder, it means building for the next community. Mm. So I'm not going to be respecting you if you're somebody that's going to always block me. Mm. And I feel that's what happens with, like, even with, like, me and my mum may go back and forth and it's like, yeah, I'm, I spoke to someone, so he's gonna do that in the house. I'm like, nah, but that's that's tired. Let's go and get a construction company. <laughs> oh, why you doing? Why <laughs> he he's been doing it for years. I said, yeah, this is the reason why. Yeah, <laughs> your plan has your, it hasn't worked your way. Mm, yeah, but again, if I'm going to Ghana now, and I'll go and start telling construction workers, look, when you're coming on time, make sure you report on. T- oh, who's this young boy coming to talk to me? Or who's this? I feel like that mentality needs to go. Needs to go, yeah, because. Known. We've the done it. Thing. You know what I'm saying? Like they, 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 if you look at it, look how much chiefs are in Ghana and look how much people in look how much chiefs actually build in their community. <laughs> it's true. They're just it makes you fun. wonder what makes them chiefs. Is it just a title? Right. More time, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. What does it mean to be a chief? Yeah. It's Literally. a question, like what is Yeah. Like, <laughs> and like, you gotta look at it. Because don't get it wrong, I get there's cultural things, but I feel there's a cultural switch with a lot of Ghanaians. It's cultural when it comes to this, but mm-hmm. when it comes to that. So I'm an adult. Yeah, I'm an adult when it comes to paying bills. And <laughs> that kind of stuff. Money. But when I want to go outside and, and go and, you know what I'm saying? When I want to do this, oh, you're a small boy. Respect your, <laughs> respect your elders. Yeah, Sit a down. big boy. Respect my money. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm going to say. So it's, it's facts. I feel like that's the problem. And I feel when people start to, when I'm not saying the elders have got to give them everything, but just sitting back. Yeah. <laughs> This guy is 23 years old from the UK. He's this engineer, whatever. Mm-hmm. This girl is 20s. You know what I'm saying? Like, include them. Yeah. 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 Include them in. That, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. That's power yeah. and diversity. Yeah. So young people and thinkers. We need, yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's what we need. Like our, yeah. com- like our corporate company would, would run things, you know, mm. or at least the way we like them to, to run. Yeah, and I think, I think we, need, we need, yeah, so coming to what you both mentioned, the reverse brain drain. So people who are special, specialists in skills that we need for the country to mm. advance. Yeah. We need those kind of people in their younger years so that they can- they actually commit, have time to work. Yeah, mm. the best of themselves to to the development of the country. And I think even for, for people who come, I feel we need to look at the people in power who who are gonna be exp- welcoming these people to have something like a, a national agenda mm-hmm. where the people who are coming back know that this is the projects we're working towards and this is a multi-year, multi-party, so it doesn't matter who's in power, this is what the agenda is, this is what the plan is, this is our strategy. We're thinking 20, 30, 50 years mm. ahead of time 
So whenever you're coming, this is what you're coming to to contribute towards. Mm -hmm. So that's that. So that's more towards the people who are going to be accept, expecting or accepting the um, diaspora coming in. Okay, Mommy? yeah, because mm -hmm. I think that we need people that have the um, vision of um, foresight. Because mm -hmm. when when just said what did it, what did China do? China had a vision. Mm -hmm. They had a vision of where they wanted to be in thirty years, yeah. and they went and they worked towards doing that. And so it seems like as when one party comes in, they change the vision, and then mm -hmm. they do, and then it's like they stop, start, stop, start. It's expensive. It's expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's expensive. Time expensive. Very expensive. expensive. Very expensive. Time, time, expensive time, money. Because at the end of the day, things will keep going, and you have more children that can't work, or they have no jobs, or they don't have yeah. the right skills. Mm -hmm. That's another topic, so, yeah. man. That is like, another topic. The unemployment in Ghana, which we'll have to touch upon um, at another time, because. I know we're running out of time in this particular episode. Um, but yeah, young Ghanaian professionals in the house. Um, Isaac, Kwame, uh, Yah, Jess, it's been great talking about the great test for migration and also looking at the pitfalls of moving to Ghana and how we can kind of overcome them and, you know, a bit of everything. So it's been a great conversation, guys. Just want to let you know, guys know out there who's watching um, for today's show, let's head over to the soundofacrowd.com forward slash the great the great migration mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. the dot com forward slash the great migration and uh yeah we will catch you in the next episode thank you very much okay mm -hmm.